Welcome, friends, to Centennial United Methodist Church and our worship service here at the Roseville campus. Whatever you are feeling this morning, welcome. Come and let us worship together. Will you join me now in our call to worship? The Father's voice bears witness to the Son. God God has has shown shown himself himself to to us. us. The Son bows his head beneath the waters of the Jordan. God God has has shown shown himself himself to us. us. Christ submits to John's baptism and frees us from slavery. God God has has shown shown himself himself to us. us. God's love is seen to the end of the world. God God has has shown shown himself himself to to us. We continue to encounter the epiphany of Jesus in the world in this season after Christmas. Here, John the Baptist is laying the groundwork for Jesus' public ministry. And Jesus takes a very public step in our third reading today. Let us listen together from Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. 
John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? We continue reading from Luke as John the Baptist talks with the crowds. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not exhort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than me is coming. I am not worthy to unite thung in his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat from his garnery. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Hello, friends. It is good to see you today. Our next song is talking about the baptism. And many of you have heard this sung in worship by our Rejoice Singers, and we've sung it for some of your baptisms as well. To the Lord's baptismal waters We have come to be baptized We are sealed and marked forever And we hear the promised cry You are God's own child You are God's own child From the waters rise couple things that I can't wait to share with you today. The first one is double stuff Oreos. I really wish I could share these with you. Oh, they're kind of hard to open. They're so good. It might be hard to see from the camera, but look at all that stuff in there. So good. I also have another thing. This was new to me until I saw it at the store. I had no idea they made these. Birthday cake Oreos. It looks exactly like the double stuff Oreo, but inside all that yummy, creamy stuff, there's sprinkles. I think Mm Mm-hmm, super good. If you can find these, you should try them. So good. Well, these ones, the birthday cake ones, are a lot like the double stuff ones, right? There's the chocolatey outside, there's the creamy inside, 
but the birthday cake ones have the sprinkles. So they're kind of the same and kind of different. Well, our scripture today talks about two kinds of baptism that are kind of the same and kind of different. And that's what made me think of, of these Oreos when I saw them. In the scriptures that we've read already, John the Baptist is talking about a baptism of repentance. And he talks about baptism by water. So repent is kind of a fancy word for like turning around or turning away from something when we're maybe not acting the way we should or doing something kind of bad or mean. It's to turn away from that and to do something different. Well, John baptizes Jesus, and Jesus has a baptism with water and the Holy Spirit. When Jesus is baptized, he's praying, and then the heavens open up, and the Spirit of God comes down in the form of a dove and names and claims Jesus as God's own son, which is pretty remarkable. John and Jesus both talk about baptism, about turning and repenting and living our lives the way God intends us to. John's baptism is with water. Jesus' baptism is with water and the Holy Spirit. Kind of the same, kind of different. Both remarkable. If you or someone in your house hasn't been baptized and you want to talk more about it, contact Pastor Brian, Pastor Whitney, or myself, and we'd love to talk with you more about baptism. It's a little bit tricky now with COVID and all these restrictions we have, but we can still have the conversation together and see what that step might mean for you and your family. Let's pray together. Holy God, thank you for naming us and claiming us as your own, for inviting us in to your beloved family and helping us to walk with you more closely each day. Amen. We continue to read from Luke as John the Baptist sets the stage for Jesus. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. Through these words, guide us to live a spirit-filled life. I invite you to pray with me. O oh God, out of all the words which are spoken this day, out of all the words which are sung, out of all the words which are heard, may it be your living word that remains and abides with us through the power of the Spirit and in the name of the Christ we pray. And let everyone say, Amen. According to legend, Zacchaeus arose early every morning and left his house. After a while, his wife became quite curious about this and decided to follow him in secret one morning. She watched as her husband took a bucket and filled it with water and then walked with it outside the town gates. Zacchaeus stopped at a sycamore tree, set down the bucket and then cleared some debris around the roots. He then poured the water around the base of the tree, caressed the trunk of the tree, 
and then stood back in awe, seemingly. At this point, his wife came out of her hiding place and asked him what he was doing. And without hesitation, Zacchaeus answered his wife's question by saying, this is where I met Christ. Where did you meet Christ? Where do you meet Christ? Epiphany, the season after the Christmas season, is about meeting Christ. It's about Christ being revealed to the world, to the Magi as a 12-year-old, to the teachers, the rabbis in the Grand Jerusalem Temple. And in his baptism, during his baptism in the Jordan River, Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River is dramatic Jesus is baptized and is praying when the heavens are opened and the Holy Spirit descends upon him in bodily form like a dove. And there is a voice from heaven. You are my son, the beloved, in you I am well pleased. The heavens were opened, we read. This calls to mind Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God And the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. The heavens are telling the glory of God. In the firmament, the dome of the sky proclaims God's handiwork. Have you ever just stood in awe in the midst of the expanse of the sky? And it maybe takes your breath away. And and you can't help but go, ah. Maybe that's what going to the mountains does for us. Or staying a couple of days on the Pacific Ocean or on the coast of Lake Superior. Or maybe that's what flying does for us. Or maybe that's what going back to the farm and there under the vast expanse of the sky and the western horizon you see a huge storm rolling in right towards you. Ah. I think we need those times, friends, when we realize just how majestic creation is, just how majestic the Creator is, how small we are compared to the Milky Way, how small we are compared to the vast reaches of space that our finest telescopes can reach. And yet, this God comes to us. That's the promise. That's the grace of Christmas. This God comes to us in a child. This God comes to us in this Jesus. How do you meet Christ? So Jesus was baptized and was praying in our scripture today. And the heavens were opened and we read And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. Like a dove. Jesus was paying attention to his surroundings in nature, to God's awesome presence. Obviously, yes, Jesus was attending to the moment I remember the time when we were leading a youth camp and after supper we took the kids down to the beach to talk about baptism and to remember their baptism. It had been cloudy most of the day and just as we got down to the beach with the 40 campers, the sun broke out and a bird swooped down and the kids suddenly were quiet. And I told the kids the story of the heavens opening and the dove coming down upon Jesus and Jesus' baptism. And there was this sense of awe in that moment. Was it perhaps God coming among us in a special way, I asked them? And we invited them to splash each other 
to help each other remember their baptism. And it was playful and it was joyful. And yes, the Holy Spirit descended that day among us. Luke's gospel tells us that the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. But in Celtic Christianity, the wild goose is the symbol for the Holy Spirit. Did you know that? In Celtic, uh, Celtic Christianity, yes, sometimes God's Spirit is as wild and unpredictable as a wild goose, sustaining us, surprising us, guiding us in new directions. Are we paying attention for the Spirit? I believe the church at its best is a spirit-led church, that everything we do is to be bathed in prayer. Are you praying for each other? Are you spending time thinking through, praying through what your life is about? Are you praying for the deep, deep needs of the world? And a voice came from heaven, we read, You are my son, the beloved. In you I am well pleased. Baptism, friend, tells us who we are. We are not like the old song from the group, Kansas, went just dust in the wind. We're not just consumers. We're not just cogs in the machine. We are children of God. We have a God-given calling to arise, shine, for your light has come. Like the great epiphany scripture from the prophet Isaiah speaks to us of. Yes, baptism tells us who we are. But who are we as a nation? When marauders break into the United States Capitol, breaking windows to get in, causing senators and representatives to flee for their lives, causing helter-skelter disruption to the due process of our election. When the Confederate flag, the flag of rebellion against the Constitution, is paraded through the Capitol building and is flown in many places around the crowd gathered on the Capitol grounds. When the electoral vote ballots have to be saved from the incoming insurrectionists, when the marauders go into one of the chambers of commerce, of Congress rather, and tear down the American flag to put up the flag of the outgoing president, when the marauders erect a gallows with a noose on the grounds of the U.S. Capitol, a gruesome and unmistakable reminder to our black brothers and sisters of lynchings, when the Proud Boys far-right extremist group has 2,000 members present, a group that the president told on national television during the presidential debate to stand back and stand by when the president's own lawyer calls for, quote, trial by combat just before the crowd forces its way into the sacred shrine of democracy at the Capitol. Who are we as a nation anyway? I'm not going to spend any more time on this today because it is only Thursday at this time of the recording. And we will learn much more and there's so much more to be discussed as a nation together. I would urge us as a nation to listen, in Lincoln's words, to our better angels. Baptism asks us to consider who we are. A friend of mine who I knew had a deep relationship with Jesus Christ once shared how when he had doubts or struggles in his faith, it wasn't always enough to feel God's presence. In such times, 
he said that he needed to remember that he was baptized. He was loved by God, no matter what, from infancy, from square one. The promises of God in baptism are good for all time. You are a child of God. Embrace it. Claim it. Open your arms and your heart wide to Jesus Christ. Will we live into that identity? Into Jesus' own words to his disciples in the gospel, follow me. Will we live into Jesus' own words in the gospel? As he launched his ministry, saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, and to proclaim release to the prisoners. May it be so. May it be so for soul and body together for the healing of the world. Amen and amen. Responsibly with me, our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, who speaks through the prophets and lifts our gaze up to high and beautiful paths and peaks. I believe in Christ Jesus, free of corruption, yet willingly numbered among the sinners, baptized in the waters of the Jordan. I believe in the Spirit, who, is, who rests on Jesus like a dove, who, and who inspired him with such love as the world has not seen before or since. I believe that those who are baptized into Christ share his spirit, his mission, and the ultimate victory over the sin and death. I believe that there is no human ability that cannot be enlarged and no weakness that cannot be used by Christ to praise of God. I believe that this be living in the gift from God, not to be used from the self-gratification, but for building up of the church and for the humble service to the world. I believe in myself as a baptized child of God, the recipient of the healing grace, 
which precedes and supersedes of the efforts to be true. With the help of God, I will attempt to live my belief of all the days of my life, and by God's grace dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Earlier we sang, To the Lord's baptismal waters we have come to be baptized. We are sealed and marked forever, and we hear the promised cry. You are God's own child. You are God's own child. From the waters rise a people called to follow God's command. Go to every tribe and nation, every place, every land. I'll always be with you. I'll always be with you. We are now invited into this time of offering. As people sealed and marked forever by the Spirit, we bring our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. You are invited now to give as you feel led. Thanks be to God. on the altar are celebrating the lives of Charlotte Johnson, who passed away on December 16th, 2020. Ruth Rose, who passed away on December 27th of 2020. Mary Lou Carlson, who passed away December 27th of 2020. And Kenneth Rhodes, who passed away on January 4th of 2021. Will you join me in prayer? Glorious God, as Jesus prayed at his baptism, your mothering spirit washed over him, confirming his identity, providing sustenance and strength. Wash over us today, confirming our identity, giving us sustenance, giving us strength as well. Lord, we pray for your church. May your word spark us to action in our lives, full of truth and joy, as we seek to serve one another. 
We pray for leaders around the globe, especially our leaders here in the United States. May your justice provoke them and us to shape a peaceful world where all work for the common good of family, friends, neighbors, and strangers alike. We pray for all who suffer grief or sickness of any kind. May your tender presence abide with us and hasten our healing. We pray for all those who have died, that your steadfast love might shelter them in the peace of your eternal light. O oh God, you have made us, formed us, and called us by name, and you have redeemed us in Christ. Receive our prayers, those we've lifted in voice and those we lift in sighs too deep for words. Hear us, Lord, as we continue to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are people of hope. Hear this scriptural benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may be filled with hope through the Spirit who dwells within. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen.